Good morning. How are you today? All very well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good sir. Dr. Watson. Excuse my presumption. Uh, Dr. Mortimer pointed you out to me. From the window of his surgery as you passed. Oh. Possibly he's told you my name. Stapleton. A very good house. Yes, indeed. How do you do? We were concerned. Franklin, Mortimer, and I. Concerned? Lest Sir Henry should not come. You know the legend of the fiend hound. We thought it might seize his imagination just as it seized poor Sir Charles's. How is Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Dr. Watson, you are here. It, it follows then that Mr. Holmes is interested. I'm afraid I cannot answer your question. Well, may I ask? if he is going to honor us with a visit himself. He cannot leave town. Other cases engage his attention. I assure you, I'm simply here to visit my friend Sir Henry. I do not need help. I apologize for the intrusion. Um, a moderate walk along this path brings us to Merrifield House. I wonder, well, perhaps you would spare me an hour, Dr. Watson, that I might have the pleasure of introducing you to my sister. I'm expected back at Baskerville Hall. Now, I'm, I'm sure an hour will not hurt. Thank you, Mr. Staple. It was entomology, was it, that brought you to the moor? Indeed. Although I delight in it for its own sake, it is so vast, so, so barren, so mysterious. Well, there, for instance. What do you make of that? It would be a rare place for a gallop. <laughs> <laughs> that is the great Grimpen Mire. False step there means death. It's man or beast. Well, only yesterday I saw one of the moor ponies wander into it. He never came out. I could see his head for quite some time, straining out of the bog hole. It sucked him down at last. And even in the dry season, it is a danger to cross it, but after these recent rains, it is an awful place. And yet, I can find my way to the very heart of it and return alive. But why should you wish to visit such a horrible place? You see the low hills there beyond it? They're really islands. Flora there is undisturbed, which means, of course, that rare species can breed there. One of them, a subspecies, like Hanadi, is unique to the place. In fact, I... Uh, I'm credited with its discovery. Really? The moor is full of noises. What, what was it? The peasants say it is the hound of the Baskervilles calling for its prey. You don't believe such nonsense, surely? Did you ever hear the boom of a bittern? No. The bird is said now to be confined to certain Norfolk fens, but why not here? I've heard its cry described as being something between a foghorn and a soul in torment. What do you think? Ah. Hi, Ali. London instantly. For God's sake, do what I ask. Go back and never set foot on the moor again. Shh, my brother is coming. Miss Staple. Get away from this place at all costs. Do you see that orchid? Um, yes, yes, I do. It's a pity you came so late. Our best orchids are nearly over. Jack! You have introduced yourselves, I see. Yes. 
I was telling Sir Henry it's a pity he has missed the beauties of the moor. Oh, were I Sir Henry, Miss Stapleton, I, I'm sure I would not miss your beauty, but I'm afraid I am not. Uh, Sir Henry, that is. Merely his friend, my Dr. John Watson at your service. Uh, did you catch your butterfly? No. Entirely flies like a witch, I'm afraid. <laughs> ah, there. And forget my foolish outburst, Dr. Watson. I cannot forget, Miss Stapleton. You must! Sir Henry is my friend. His welfare is a very close concern of mine. Tell me why you are so eager that he should return to London. You know the story of the Hound. I do not believe such nonsense. But, but I do! If you have any influence with Sir Henry, take him away! I fear that unless you can give me more definite information than this, it would be impossible to get him to move. I cannot say anything definite! For I do not know anything definite. Miss Stapleton, I would ask you one more question. If you meant no more than this when you first spoke to me, why were you so eager that your brother should not overhear what you said? There is nothing to which he or anybody else could object. My brother is very anxious to have the hall inhabited. He thinks it's for the good of the poor folk upon the moor. He would be very angry if he knew I had said anything which might induce Sir Henry to go away. Any luck? Afraid not. Flies like a witch. And so beautiful. Pale clouded yellow. I have a number of them, of course. I must show you my collection. The English Lepidoptera, my friend. I have made a particular study of those insects which inhabit the margins of heath and marsh. A magnificent collection and the work of a serious scientist. Even the exotica. I must mention a brilliant creature called Morpho Pelides Limpida was dated and catalogued with the care he applies to his personal field, the British Lycanidae. One of which is unique to the moor. I must also report that the new brown boot has turned up. Barrymore found it amongst Sir Henry's luggage when he unpacked. Miss Stapleton is very handsome. And on Tuesday, we are to dine here at Basketball Hall with all our neighbours. So Sir Henry, who chafes a little at the restrictions you have imposed upon him, will have a chance to judge her beauty for himself. We are also to meet Dr. Mortimer's wife and the old vicar of Brimpen, who is very shy, they say. And Mr. Franklin, an amateur astronomer of some note, who has a reputation of being litigious to a fault. A red letter day. Law is law, and I mean to teach them. I have established a right of way slap through the middle of old Middleton's Park. <laughs> Case decided today. We must teach these magnets they cannot ride roughshod over the rights of commoners. Case decided today. Today, Mr. Franklin. Today, sir. Why do you ask? They are saying in Fernworthy that you've had the wood there closed to the villagers. Also today. A <laughs> red letter day, as I said. True, sir. I shall be burnt in effigy tonight in Fernworthy, but I have the case against them. Infernal people seem to think there are no rights of property. They can swarm where they like with their picnic papers and bottles. But why should they complain? No one goes to the wood now. They have to cross the moor to get to it. No one will cross the moor. And why is that, sir? You've surely heard. The hound walks abroad upon the moor. The hound of the Baskerville, Sir Henry. I've heard. Is it a phenomenon you believe in yourself, Mr. Franklin? Ask the vicar. Astronomic and forensic matters are my domain. Demonic matters are his. <laughs> is it a hound of hell, vicar? Or what? Uh, yes, um, mm, an interesting question. Whatever it is that has been seen, it is undoubtedly something. 
our farrier, Thomas Chubb, is not a man given to visions. And he saw something out there. A dog, he said. About the size of a calf. And I do not think local hysteria is an adequate explanation. Myself. I pray nightly that it remove itself from us, whatever it is. We all may sleep the more soundly. <sighs> yes. Ah. I believe it is seldom the murderer who frightens the folk. In Grimpen, they believe he is still upon the moor. We are too ready to condescend and attribute superstition to these poor people when they are, in fact, so.